Jeff Largent from IU. I work on IU's KC implementation. Um, this is Mohamed Koshe, who's from BU. He's the technical lead of their KC implementation. And this is Leo Trubilski, <laughs> who's a, a Java developer at RSmart. And we're going to talk to you today about some different customization strategies for uh, maintaining KC and, and enhancing it. So to give you an overview of kind of what we're going to be talking about, um, we'd like to give you first an introduction to Maven overlays, uh, what they can do, what they are, what they are not. Um, just to start off, how many of you know what a Maven overlay is or have it at least heard of it before? Okay, so pretty good number. Um, so we're going to move on from that to talking with uh, about overlays with multi-module projects. And then once we've kind of laid the baseline for what an overlay is and what it can do, talk about some slightly more advanced strategies for uh, customizing things using the Spring Framework um, and uh, how that is set up in KC specifically. Uh, and what that allows you to do is override several module-specific XML resources, including services, standalone beans, data dictionary definitions, repository mappings, and uh, stress action mappings. So we'll go into that um, and how you would do that in the KC installation. And then finally, just finish off with some additional tips and tricks for developers uh, for how to make everything go smoothly. So Leo's going to take it away with the uh, open contract. Hi, everybody. Um, so what, let's talk about uh, what, why we want to use an overlay and what overlays are not. We'll also go over how overlays work at a uh, semi-high level. Um, not really too technical, so you don't have to worry about it being deep into that. And then we'll also try to get one up and running, um, or show you how to get one up and running. So why would we use an overlay? Um, smaller projects, you know, are it's easier to attract smaller projects with. Um, for example, you don't have like a huge code base that you can 
that you'll have to track changes that don't even relate to your project. Um, upgrading dependencies is pretty easy to do if you want to upgrade a dependency. Uh, it's not just, you know, normally with maybe you just change the, the dependency version, but with an, with an overlay, um, you have complete control, which leads to our um, the next point, which is you own your POM. So uh, with the KC project, for example, you overlay the KC project, um, you don't have to worry about making changes to directly to the POM, and when you merge changes back, you don't have to worry about you know those changes affecting you. You own the POM, all the changes that are in it, and the dependencies. Um, it gives you more flexibility uh, with granular modifications at a project level, and uh, Mohammed and Jeff will talk more about that um, in later slides. It's easier to modularize your project as well. Um, again, for the same reasons as before, you don't have a parent project, or you do have a parent project, but you don't have to worry about this other project um, getting in your way. You're really working with your own, and you have complete control over it. Um, your dependency project source code isn't required. Um, you know, the goal behind an overlay is basically to lay on top of something. So you don't have to have the source code available all the time just to build your project. There's no mixing of changes. Uh, you don't have to worry about merges or, or patches from the foundation. You, you do, but in a separate project. But for your overlay project, it's very simple. There's no, you don't have to merge in changes or deal with that stuff. Um, you also have change isolation. Uh, for example, uh, if you have specific modifications that you want to make, you can isolate them better through your, your maven overlay and you also get better code reads. What an overlay isn't is project inheritance. Um, I don't think there's anything really that gives you true project inheritance. Um, and overlay, again, isn't one of those things that would offer that to you. It's, it's still one project. You know, you, you still have your KC implementation that you're going to deliver, um, you, you don't have anything that you're inheriting from. Um, it's not a silver bullet for your web app um, either. Uh, it's not just going to make it work for you. You still have to work, build modifications into it and you still have to make those customizations. Uh, it's also not a change management pattern. Um, deploying to environments and uh, you know, handling those environments, migration, things like that, but still all on your own. Um, all this does is it just makes the war for you. Um, and um, it's not for small, it's not, uh, so let's go into uh, how, how overlays work. Um, simply put, it just, you take one war and you're basically building it on top of another. Um, literally overlapping another war. So if you imagine your war exploded. Yeah. <laughs> Audio effects. Um, no, uh, it, it, imagine your war exploded and then, or you have two wars exploded and you lay files from one literally on top of another. If there are files in place that exist there, it overwrites them. If there are files, you know, that aren't there, it puts files there. It's literally, it's not a merge, it's literally laying one on top of the other. Um, the project being overlapped is your dependency. Again, like we mentioned before, the source isn't required for this. You can just get, you know, you, you're laying on top of the war file. Let's have a look. Um, get a better visual idea. So this is your basic um, KC project where you've got, you know, your source main web app, and then inside of it, you've got your meta in, web in, CSS, um, KR stack, you know, these, these folders. And if you want to make a, an overlay um, project, you can have an overlay project, and you just want to overlay and add your own index.jsp, right? So your result then would be something like this. The same as before, but now you have this index.jsp file there. Uh, um, basically how it works, right? So um, now I'm going to give it over to Mohammed, and he's going to talk about setup. Hello everyone, Take the, the easy part I guess here. Um, so it is really easy to set up an overlay project. Um, so 
you know, as Leo uh, mentioned, that the idea of, of the uh, overlay is you have a WAR file that has uh, Java classes and have resources, and the overlay is basically to have another job, another project that will take advantage or use that WAR classes, um, uh, resources, JSPs, images, etc. So, what you need is the WAR file that you are overlaying, and you're going to create a new one. That will, the new one will become your new project or new WAR file that you will deploy to your Tomcat or any other web ser uh, server. So, um, as I said, like you need the, 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 the WAR file um, from the, the project that you overlay. So if you don't have the WAR file ready, uh, then you have to install it, or you have, with KC5, we focus on, on KC project here. Um, I think in 5.1 they made it easy. So all you need is like really just to install uh, using Maven command. So Maven so what, what it will do for you, it will package uh, your WAR file, um, create all the jar files that you need, and push them all into your local Maven repo. So in one step, that all happened. Uh, I think previously, if, if you uh, read, um, go online or read uh, books or something, that they will tell you that you have to, to separate these steps. You have to say, compile your code, generate the um, jar files, which is maybe in jar jar, uh, and then build the WAR file and copy or deploy your WAR file to your Maven uh, repo. With 5.1, I think it's, it's they made it easy. So here we're talking about really uh, KC uh, foundation code. You download it, you uh, package it or install it, we'll do that all for you. And then <clears throat> once that's done, you create your own customized Maven project. You know, how you do want to do that, it's up to you. If you're good at command line, you can you know, have a command line to create that for you. Or just using Eclipse, create a new Maven uh, project. What that will produce, uh, a shell of, of a Java project with palm.xml, and that has nothing in it. So all you need then, you need to add the case, uh, foundation case in jar and more file as it dependencies into your, 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 um, your new palm. So, and that's it. You basically have your, your, your project. So, so the new project, at, to start with, it has nothing in it but adding the dependencies for the WAR file and the KC file. And there are some, uh, here's the, uh, the example of how you do it. In your new palm, you, pre, uh, you do the, um, you add the WAR file and the scope is at a runtime. So when you build your, your uh, application or your, your project, it will go to your Maven, get the WAR file, and basically include it with your output WAR file or the new WAR file that you're gonna create. Um, so since you're gonna be also refer if once you start like basically customizing your code, uh, overlaying a, a, a Java class that you need a reference for the, well, all the um, Jar files are also you want to include them within, so you have a reference within your your new uh, application. And so that's I think it's enough to start with. If you want more flexibility, you add the uh, plugin, uh, the Maven plugin. Uh, and what that will do is like for I think once you you, you familiar yourself with it, you can do really amazing. It's like if, if you want to do, um, let's say you have, uh, or uh, exclusion, it's called. Um, so you have, your WAR file has a jar file that you don't want it. Like the, let's say the foundation, uh, Casey, they use a common library that does not match what, what, what you wanted, uh, the, the new, um, uh, with the new project that you that you're doing, so using the plugin, you can say, okay, overlay everything, exclude.
this shell file because I'm, I'm going to add it later or I'm going to use a different version. Um, so and then 